Hi everyone, it's Natalie Drury here. As mentioned at the end of my last vlog, I was going to visit Hong Kong's east meets west neighbor. So here it is, Macau. Macau is not only famous for its casinos and fancy hotels, it is also known for its Portuguese cuisine, sightseeing, entertainment and shopping districts. So what about its history? Situated off the southern Chinese coast an hour's fast ferry ride from Hong Kong, Macau used to be a small fishing village. It was then settled by Portuguese merchants and missionaries in the mid-16th century until it returned to Chinese rule in December 1999. Macau was originally called Ma Kok, but in Portuguese it was referred to as Macau. It consists of main island of Macau, which contains the city centre, and the two other islands, Taipa and Coloan. There are bridges connecting the islands. Macau's population is approximately 700,000 people, 90% of the population being Chinese and the rest being Mekinese or Filipino. When the Portuguese settled in Macau, generations of them intermarried with local Chinese and also with people from India and other European countries such as Holland who settled in the region. This very racially mixed group of people became known as the Mekinese and they very much embody the East meets West flavour of the territory. <coughs> Since we booked last minute, it was difficult making reservations, but we managed to book Crown Plaza. It turned out to be a nice surprise. The room was very spacious and there was a master bed and two sofa beds. The hotel service was excellent. This toilet is massive. The walk-in closet. There's a there's a bed. There's a bed. Slot in. There's still karaoke. Yeah. For three yeah. people, oh, this is pretty and decent. This might be a new favorite hotel. And that's, that's looking out over to Hong Kong. Hong Kong? Yeah. This is this is all Zhuhai. Starbucks break. The Macau Tower is the best place for a bird's eye view of Macau. It is 300 meters tall and a lift to the top takes under one minute. You can bungee jump, sky jump or skywalk on the tower. But rather than take our life in our own hands by doing any high risk activities, we went for the decidedly lower risk option of the superb buffet dinner situated on the 60th floor giving a wonderful view of the whole of Macau. In some ways, the night view is better because the city lights up with the neon of the casinos. On the 360 revolving Macau Tower. Merry Christmas from Macau. That's all, that's all. Merry Christmas, free Christmas celebration. Christmas. Wow! 
Happy winter solstice! Sweet glutinous dumplings are must to eat for all Chinese at this time. Day. Apparently getting a taxi in Macau is very difficult so we decided to take the, the public bus. The bus drivers here are very friendly. If you ask them for di directions or your destination they will tell you. Today we explored the center of Macau which contains most of the important historical sites. We started with St. Joseph's Seminary. I am currently in the city center of Macau and it reminds me of this place I went to in Xiamen. Gulang Yu. Yes, that's right. St. Joseph's Seminary and Church were founded in the 18th century by Jesuit missionaries. There, you can see Macau's most precious religious relics, including what is claimed to be a bone from the arm of St. Francis Xavier. Macau's alleys are full of hidden surprises, dotted with murals and unique European architecture. Note that the street signs are all ceramic tiles placed in the walls just as in Portugal. Too many people during Christmas, so I don't recommend coming here during Christmas. Too many, too many people. This church was built at the beginning of the 17th century, but a fire destroyed it and the adjacent buildings of St. Paul's College in 1835. So only the front of the church and the steps could be saved. The ruins of St. Paul's is one of the most popular photo spots and certainly the most iconic location in Macau. Monte Fort is located near the St. Paul's ruins. It was designed as Macau's most important military defence. It is also known as the Fortress of Our Lady of the Mount of St. Paul's. According to research, Monte Fort covers an area of approximately 8,000 square metres. This site took nearly 10 years to be constructed to completion in 1617. Amar Temple is the oldest existing temple in Macau, built in 1488 and dedicated to the sea goddess Mazu. Mazu is thought to have been a living female shaman who lived in the late 10th century and is most revered by Chinese seafarers. So temples built in her honor tend to be situated in mostly coastal cities of southeastern China.
The Maritime Museum is situated next to the Amar Temple. It is dedicated to the history of local maritime activity. It is a three-story building, and once inside, it gives the impression of being inspired by the design of a sailing ship. You will get an insight on the culture and traditions of fishermen in southern China and Macau. I enjoyed this museum because it is not too big and can be easily covered within one hour. A ten-minute walk from the museum took us to the Moorish barracks built in the late 19th century. Architectural elements fuse Arabic and Gothic elements. Unfortunately, it was closed when we went, as it was under renovation of some sort. But luckily, we managed to take some pictures of the outside. <laughs> Our next destination was the Mandarin's house. It was built in 1869 and belonged to theoretician and reformer called Zheng Guanying, an intellectual figure in the late Qing Dynasty. It seems that he was most famous for writing a work called Words of Warning in Times of Prosperity. It was a unique building when it was constructed because while it had a Chinese-style layout. It also featured Western-influenced architectural design. Examples of such design fusion can be seen in these video clips. The Mandarin's house is the largest private residence in Macau, covering an area of nearly 4,000 square meters. Starting from the middle of the last century, the descendants of this family rented out the complex to various tenants. But the property continued to degrade and was ultimately bought up by the government in 2001 in an effort to preserve and exhibit this very unique and historic dwelling place. This Instagrammable porcelain tile wall is located at the former government's office in the city center of Senado Square. Iconic food in Macau: milk pudding, pork chop bun. In the evening, we made our way to Pusara da Mongha, part of Macau's Culinary Training Institute, to try their well-known Macanese buffet dinner. Overall, the food was excellent, but to top off the bill was the turkey, which was perfectly cooked and very moist. Day three was Kolowan Day, and our first port of call was the Panda Pavilion. Merry Christmas from Macau. It is very nicely designed to mimic the panda's natural habitat. While they were not particularly energetic, we had good views of them. In a separate complex, we also saw a red panda and a variety of monkeys. How adorable! Family all sleeping together to get through this winter. They're hidden up there. There's like two monkeys. We missed this. 
They're up there. We then made for Koloan village, located at the southern tip of the island of Koloan. Koloan village. Nice and peaceful. Six Lord Stowe's Bakeries iconic egg tarts and a lime and passion fruit tart. The village has always been famous as ground zero for the Macau egg tart, which I had always thought was based on a Portuguese recipe. So I was quite surprised to discover that it is actually a very recent innovation not by a Portuguese but by an Englishman called Andrew Stowe who created this unique version of egg tart in the 1980s. The overall result is good but other equally good products can now be found in Hong Kong too with variations using either egg yolk or egg whites for those watching the cholesterol. situated on the east coast of Kolowan. The military club. ice cream sandwich place yay later in the day we went back to macau city to try a traditional ice cream sandwich at lai kek they offered a retro packaged ice cream sandwich the flavors included honeydew melon vanilla and coconut the ice cream they sell have excellent flavors though the colors are not as vibrant as one sees in many gelato shops We had planned to have our Christmas Eve dinner at the Don Alfonso Italian restaurant. The problem was that we didn't realize there were two restaurants with the same name at different Lisboa hotels. 
We turned up at the Grand Lisboa in Macau, but our restaurant was at the Grand Lisboa Palace in Taipa. Fortunately, there was a free shuttle bus between the two. About 25 minutes later, we arrived at the right restaurant. But be careful when you go to the Lisboa Palace because it is huge, and going anywhere in the building takes a long time. Day four was Taipa Day. Taipa is where most of the casino hotels are located. We started the day with a visit to the Eiffel Tower at the Parisian Macau. The Parisian has a spectacular lobby with ceiling murals and beautiful Christmas decor. Eiffel Tower in Macau. Right now we're on the seventh floor, which is free, and we're going to go to the thirty-seventh floor, which is the observation deck of the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower and the Londoner over there and the Venetian over there.
The Venetian is one of Macau's most famous casinos and entertainment venues. A central feature is the Grand Canal, which mimics the gondola rides of Venice. Book your ride and be serenaded by the gondoliers as you float along the canal. This street was officially named after Pedro Alexandrino de Cunha in 1884, who was the former governor of Macau. Known for its Portuguese-style architecture, its local street food, and its favorite hangout place for Taipa residents. Taipa House refers to buildings built in the 1920s. They are typical examples of Portuguese architecture in Macau. You can also see a beautiful mangrove swamp in front of the houses. All in all, Macau was fun and insightful. Because Macau was quite a small place, it was possible to see a lot in a short space of time. Lots of attractions were within walking distance of one another. The food was generally excellent, as was the standard of service in all the hotels and restaurants we visited. When you are on holiday, you will inevitably run into a cross-section of society. Most of it good and some of it not so good. Please like and subscribe for more adventures next year.